When the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer dropped, Zelda fans worldwide were stunned and left in awe at the wonder of exactly what was happening on the screen. Aside from the obvious references to Malice and Ganondorf, something about the trailer, be it the cavern, music, atmosphere, or all of it, made me feel like an ominous, horrifying act was about to happen. Most fans felt this way as well, as we've all been spending the past few months speculating on what Ganondorf is going to do when he revives, as it appears he's in the middle of doing in the trailer. Three months have passed since we all first laid eyes on the revealed trailer, and I'm only just now able to pinpoint exactly what about this trailer feels so monstrously dangerous to me. You see, I'm not really afraid of what Ganondorf will do to Hyrule. I'm not afraid of what the green glowing hand is doing to Link. If anything, it looks like it's saving him. No, what I'm most afraid of, what makes me feel like this game is going to be the darkest Zelda title yet, is what Ganondorf may do to Zelda. Looking closely at the events of the trailer, we can see Link and Zelda searching what appears to be an ancient cavern in hopes of finding something. After all, why else would a heroic duo delve farther and farther into something this cavernous unless they had a specific reason to be there? With Zelda being known across the franchise for having visions and being able to hear spiritual voices that guide her, and given that she has a drive for research and exploration as we see in Breath of the Wild, it can be argued that Zelda is the one searching this cavern while Link, her knight, follows close behind. She's even seen as the one holding a torch for the both of them in one scene, implying leadership in their ventures. When Zelda and the knight see something in the distance, things begin to go awry and the trailer begins cutting quickly between scenes in an effort to confuse the viewers. I began to feel alarmed when I realized what happens to Zelda in this whole encounter. Here we can see what is presumably the duo's entrance to Ganondorf's holding chamber. Note that Link is holding a torch here with Zelda holding nothing. The next time we see Zelda, she's falling due to the ground under her feet giving way, but the scene right after shows her standing calmly next to the Ganondorf body, holding a torch. Obviously this isn't shown to us in proper chronological order, otherwise Zelda wouldn't have a torch when she's down by Ganondorf. To me, it appears Zelda goes to Ganondorf's body first, then retreats when the body starts twitching to life. The duo make it back to the elevated ground near the exit, but Zelda falls back down to the level Ganondorf is on. The last thing we see happen to Zelda is how she turns around with a shocked, horrified face on for what she's looking at. While it could be argued that the scene shown of Link's gloved right hand helping Zelda up means that Link pulls Zelda out of danger, unfortunately I don't think we're that lucky. Link must have given Zelda this helping hand before any of these events took place, when they were climbing elsewhere, and here's why. When they enter the chamber, Link has both gloves on, but when the hand magic event takes place, his glove is removed. If the hand magic Link wields in the trailer happens at any point when the duo is seeing Ganondorf's body, as it is very heavily implied due to the hand being present on Ganondorf's body, then he can't give Zelda a helping hand out of where she's fallen because at any point afterwards, he shouldn't have his right glove on. Obviously it is possible that I could be interpreting it wrongly, but if this is true and Zelda is left down here with a reawakening Ganondorf and no way back up to safety, I think it's probable that Ganondorf or the malice pouring out of him, or both, will possess Princess Zelda. Let me explain a couple reasons why. Now while this is all going to be just speculation, there are a few reasons to believe this may not be such a far-fetched idea. Firstly, it's already been explained to us that this particular Zelda game is going to be darker than Majora's Mask. This is straight from the mouth of Aonuma himself in an IGN interview. Now think about that for a second. If he really means that, then exactly how dark is he saying this game is going to be? Majora's Mask was arguably one of the darkest games ever created, centering strongly around feelings of grief and even the depressing topping of everyone's inevitable death. How could you possibly go darker than this? Well. Corrupting what was once a beautiful picture of pure spirit and righteous indignation would be a great start. Secondly, this has already been done before. In the game Twilight Princess, the first phase of defeating the demon lord Ganondorf is a fight with puppet Zelda, or in other words, possessed Zelda. Ganondorf is no stranger to dirty tactics, and with the malice-driven Calamity Ganon we see in Breath of the Wild, Unless he suddenly grew a personality, I doubt he would feel very badly about possessing her again. 
Thirdly, and most importantly, Zelda herself mentions that Ganon has an obsessive refusal to give up on revival in the original Japanese text. This is important because Ganondorf's body looks like it has seen better days, and instead of using this mostly dead hull of a body, why not revive again using Zelda's body? Here's the real kicker, what if a Ganon-possessed Zelda still has her powers? I mean, Ganon stole the powers of the Sheikah and their technology in Breath of the Wild and was defeated. I think the next step could be to steal the power of Hylia herself. If this is true, if Zelda is going to be possessed and be the next incarnation of Ganon, then we do truly have a dark, dark Zelda game to look forward to. But of course, as I said before, this is all speculation. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I know this was a shorter video, but we really don't have too much to go on at this point. So at this point, I think this is all that can be said about this subject. Thank you so very much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the content and subscribe if you haven't already for much, much more. As always, a huge, huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in getting your name on this list at the end of my videos, visit the Patreon link in the description below. Also in the description is the link for joining our growing Discord server, where you can be in on all the fun. That's all I've got for you today, so without further ado, this is Mask Nintendo Bandit signing out. Peace!